a mess, but I've just come in from the garden and I thought, you know what, I'm going to put together a quick video to show and encourage those who don't think they've got it all together, that you can grow food amongst a mess. <laughs> there can be weeds, there can be jobs ahead of you, you can feel like you're falling behind and you can grow in spaces that probably aren't that practical to grow in spaces. Lots is possible. I want to show you the side garden. There were, there's a little bit of um, footage of it in past videos uh, where I've showed you the situation there. Uh, it's got a massive big tree in the centre of it which shaded out that whole area initially. It's been cut back. Um, but I have managed to grow food and start producing food in there. It's a young bed compared to the rest of my uh, property. And you're looking at a property that's only in an urban setting. So I'm obviously urban homestead artist. <laughs> I paint it and I grow in an urban setting. Um, but this is my one of my least ideal spots and I didn't start it until fairly recently and I've started putting things in there and I just want to show you uh, where it's at at the moment and it's got some lovely attractive parts and it's got some mess that I still have to deal with and weeds I still have to deal with plants I need to replace and move etc but I want to show you where we're at now and uh, I think it'll be a bit fun it's just a quick one first start by showing you an example of what can come out of an urban veggie garden. Um, this is yesterday's harvest. Uh, I harvest approximately every second day and uh, sometimes a little bit in between. Uh, so, but this was over 12 kilos, including the apples you're about to see, over 12 kilos just in one day from an urban setting. So, as a result, this saves us a lot of money on food, but not only that, we get food that is straight from garden to table, which means we're getting all the nutrients or very close to all the nutrients from the food that we're picking. I deliberately pick at the last minute because the nutrient load can drop dramatically within hours of picking fruits and vegetables. So you can just imagine the loss of nutrients in some of the food that you buy from the stores, considering how long they are kept and stored, sometimes months or years. Now on to this garden. But before we do, I just want to add, and remember, you have the option of gardening without chemicals. My husband can't eat apples from the shop. There is something that they spray on it or something that gets in the apples that makes him sick but he is enjoying apples from our garden now. He really misses them, but now he can have them. So I said bed before, but this is actually a garden of beds. I've mainly gardened on the ground, but I've got a little wall garden here and a few pots lying around the place. I've planted beans in there. And on the other side of the wall garden, I've got a yellow capsicum that I planted from seedlings last year. We grew them last year and this year they have bounced back and grown again. I didn't overwinter them, I'm in Melbourne, but they survived and they're giving us more fruit this year. Um, they're looking a bit sad at the moment because it's been hot and I've just watered everything, but they were everything was a bit dry. So when I step down here off the, well, it's near the front door there, You'll see I've got pots in the, the garden. That is all pretty weedy over there. I've got clivia growing along the side of my studio wall there that's got to be moved. I've got bags of sugarcane mulch. Um, but I started beds at the back there. And there's original bed there where the corn is. Um, there's a video on an experiment right at the start of my journey on this channel. I've got pots under the tree. I utilise the tree as a little nursery space because the shade of the tree at certain times of year, of the year, sorry, 
is an advantage to put pots under there. They don't dry out as much. I still struggle a little bit with strawberries. Um, this is a pomegranate that was here or I planted it very early when we moved here, but before the garden beds went in. So fairly small pomegranates on it. I don't know if they're going to get any bigger, but I've, um, I've started getting fruit off them and that's in there. But you can see I've got wild strawberries or alpine strawberries growing all over the place there amongst grass. It really does get on top of me, this, this bed. By the time I finish with the backyard, this one um, runs away. So this is an area all in there where geranium and uh, grass are growing. I'll need to um, pull it out and plant other things in there. Now I've got a path going right through there to the back gate. And down here, even though the weeds are moving in on that space, this pine chip area, I've popped a little squash. I've got cuttings here of feverfew and sage, um, which I've allowed to start there. And I've probably overplanted, but I've just got them growing there because I'm trying to fill gaps when I've got time to fill them because gaps mean less weeds. Less weeds means more time for your garden. Uh, now, in this little spot, it was right near the path, which I've had to kind of get a stake in there, put them up. But this is a volunteer tomato that's popped up on its own. And there's a green pot there with volunteer tomatoes in there, and they're giving tomatoes. I've got a few around the property that have popped up and doing better than some of the ones I deliberately planted. I've got three uh, butternut squashes in there at the back there. I've divided my rhubarb and put a lot of rhubarb plants along there. And there's a comfrey, uh, that's a rose, we know that. Um, at the back there is also a red currant that I moved. It's struggling a little bit because it came out from underneath some shade and I've since cut back a camellia in the corner there. I'm going to replace it with other things. Now down here I've um, planted some more purple beans in there as part of my succession growing. Uh, so it's just thrown some seeds in there and we've got some um, tomatillos um, that I've never grown before and I've just tried to stake them temporarily. It's not a very good staking job off but yeah I was getting a bit worried that all those flowers are going to turn into something and they were just going to get top heavy. So there's three of them in there, a little eggplant under the basket. And over here, you can't see it in the ground, but there's elephant garlic. That's the um, dead stem of one. Uh, there's some in that bed. There's an orange tree. I've got a zucchini. Uh, no, not a zucchini. It was another button, butternut squash either side of that path. There's a strawberry in there at the base of the banana that's going gangbusters. That, that banana just is thriving in that spot. And that's a very damp spot on my property. So it is taking away all the dampness and I'm really enjoying that spot there. Beh that's another volunteer tomato. Not ideal. They're growing in the shade and then trying to reach up into the sky. This one's growing through my pineapple guava. We've been picking, um, ripening tomatoes off there, so it's still growing. Uh, that's a thornless blackberry that hasn't given me any berries yet, so it's not all that happy, but it's still growing. I'm going to give it some time. Look how big that, like I'm reaching right up the top there, and that, that baby not so long ago is a huge banana plant. I'm really hoping for some nice bananas off that. Now over here, this has gone through a lot of changes. I've had early attempts of growing things in there. I've got comfrey in pots there that have grown right through the pots into the ground. Um, that is a scarlet runner bean that's growing but not too happy there. I've recently weeded all this area and um, mulched it. So, But I've tried a few things in there and they haven't done too well, but I've had some potatoes out of there and beetroot. Now over here, that's the pineapple guava. I've got some struggling strawberry plants under there that need to go into the ground, a comfrey and some silver beet seedlings that were struggling in a pot and I've put them in the ground, which they're a little bit happier. 
Um, that is my pineapple tops. There's a video early on that shows you how to do that. That's grow pineapples from pineapple tops. Um, that is the corn that we've put in there and then, then along the edges I've planted some daikon radishes which have popped up there and there's little seedlings of um, capsicum seedlings just there. I sprinkled some seeds down recently and they're popping up there. It's probably too late for capsicums but I thought it's just seeds, got plenty, threw them in and see what's happening. I've got some herbs growing under that tree a bit uh, but you see the canopy on that but can you see the tomato plant under it? That's more volunteer tomatoes that have come up under the tree, grown and are actually fruiting. So I've just strung these ones up today and I've strung them to just the branch. So they're still under the canopy of the tree, but they managed to get enough light still to grow the tomatoes, which was my experience last year. I grew some tomatoes in a spot that should have been too shady for tomatoes, but they still grew. So it is worth trying to grow them um, in those areas because you never know. So these are indeterminate tomatoes too, so they're reaching for the sky there. There's a few more tomato plants in there. Um, that's purslane that's popped up on its own. Once you've got in the garden, it will do that. Uh, but very, very nutritious. So I've got some more baby tomatoes in there. And this is chickpeas from a packet of chickpe dried chickpeas. So I've grown them there with some seedlings given to me for some celery and some chives. So you'll see the chickpea flower there and little chickpeas. First time I've grown them, but they seem quite happy there. I've got a raised, kind of a raised bed there that I've just dug up the soil and raised it up and mulched it. That behind there is just a mass of weeds. This area under the tree, I've chopped and dropped a lot of the branches and when I've cut back the tree or I cut the suckers off the tree, it's an ornamental pear. I just throw it under the tree as a mulch for the tree so everything kind of gets chucked there instead of into a compost and it keeps it happy so that's looking from the step back um, and you see see there's all these weeds all amongst there between the tree and that corn bed that i still have to deal with i have mulched it a couple of times but still deal, dealing with it got a bit of mess but there's herbs under that tree growing. Um, there's food coming out of here. I've already picked some corn from the first lot of corn I grew in there. And there's a second lot going. And um, obviously I'm picking tomatoes and little squashes. Uh, the squash plants are not doing as well as the backyard. Um, they just make, need more food. But um, yeah, that's it. So plant some seeds and you never know what you might get. Possibly a double-decker zucchini.